Welcome to our Flower Market A-Frame Calendar Mini Album with Tag Set. That is quite a mouthful, but it's so fun and easy to create. You're gonna love this project. I'm Shari Philomahala here at the Graphic 45 headquarters, and today I'm gonna teach you how to take these supplies you see in front of you and turn it into this gorgeous home decor piece. Create an A-frame calendar mini album with us this month using our flower market. You can see our cover's got some lots of great dimension and some of those great ephemera pieces. And then each month we are celebrating with a space for your photos as well as a calendar highlight. So it'll keep you organized in style. And of course, you're gonna always need those extra little spots for journaling photos, or maybe you wanna keep a birthday list here. So a lot of fun there. And then you turn the page and we're on to the next month. So again, we've got our photo mat and our calendar even some more interactive details. And each month focuses on a different flower of the month. March is a daffodil. And then um, each month also has a nice little sentiment as well to go along with it. So you can see May's sentiment is a devotion. And more little tuck spots. June is the rose with the love sentiment. Those both can pull out here as well. So this is a great way to celebrate all year long and have something gorgeous on your desk or in your space to decorate that up. And then in the base, we have a cute little tag album as well. Of course, we don't wanna let any of our gorgeous papers go to waste, so Carla has created this little additional add-on album. This album this month has been created for us by Carla Lavera. And of course, if you know her work, you know you are not gonna be disappointed. It's gonna be filled with techniques and great ways to use up your Graphic 45 goodies. We are excited to announce that when you become a subscriber in 2023, not only are you gonna get a fabulous kit like you see in front of us with uh, project inspiration, instructions, a video tutorial, you're also going to be getting collector edition buttons that go along with it. So with the album kit, you'll be getting these larger buttons and then with the card kit subscribers will also get a cuter smaller button so these are going to be exclusive to our kits and then each month they'll have coordinating buttons with the paper collection that we're using that month along with that perk subscribers also get an ongoing 10 percent off so it's a great deal when you're uh, stocking up on your graphic 45 all year long to use your special coupon code you can pick up this kit by going to our website g45papers.com or down to your local G45 retailer. We've got stores all over the world, so if you're looking for one near you, go ahead and go to our website and check out our store locator. So grab your goodies and let's start creating this masterpiece. Now you can find your project sheet in your kit. Um, if you're just following along with us from what you have in your stash, you can pick this up on our website at g45papers.com. Just go up to inspiration and down to project sheets and there you will find over 30 different uh, project sheets for you to print out and reference um, as you create along. Step one, we are gonna be creating our calendar pages. So to do that, we're gonna take six pieces of chipboard that we have cut to be seven inches by six inches, and each piece will represent um, two months. So we've got February and March here. January will be sharing with the cover, and December will actually be on the base. So each month has its own paper, and it's a nice, gorgeous, double-sided paper we are going to be maximizing these sheets. You just want to keep in mind, one is for the cut-aparts and one is for the florals. For step two, I've taken my January cut-apart piece and I have cut this um, special. So I'm gonna have one of my uh, two of my sheets and one I'm going to focus primarily on getting the uh, decorative cut-aparts out of and then the other sheet, the second sheet, I will be using for the florals. 
So my first one I've cut from the bottom left hand corner and I've cut this out to be seven inches by four and three quarters. And then from my uh, January sheet of paper that I'm gonna be cutting my florals out of, I've cut this piece to be seven inches by one and a quarter. And then I'm just going to adhere my calendar piece to the bottom flush with the right and left hand side and bottom. And then from your flower market assortment pack, we're gonna take this cute little butterfly. I'm gonna add just a little bit of a curl to the wings and add adhesive on the body. And then this is going to adhere just on a diagonal down in this corner here. Step three, we're gonna push our January to the side and grab a new piece of chipboard. And then we're gonna cut our February floral to be seven inches by five and three eighths. Adhere this flush with the top of our chipboard piece. We are going to cut out this thinner border to be seven inches and this will adhere scallop side down. We are also gonna cut out this February calendar and this cute little tag. I've added adhesive in a U shape on the back of my February calendar, and this is just gonna go right in the center, cleaning up any extra adhesive. And then I'm going to add a dot of liquid adhesive there and our chipboard circle from our chipboard pieces. That's gonna go right on the center adding a nice bit of dimension and a great little pull tab. And once it all dries, this is just gonna slip right inside here. And then we're gonna flip over this piece, our second chipboard, and start working on the back. So this is gonna be our March calendar, and we have cut out our March floral paper to be seven inches by five inches. Making sure it's right side up on our February side, we're gonna flip this over and adhere this right side up as well and flush with the top and sides. Step four, we are cutting our March cut apart. And so the first thing we wanna do is cut out these two stamps up here. These are gonna form a pocket. So we want to include our little side spaces here on side of the stamps and the full top and bottom and keep them as one. We're gonna cut out this new beginnings, this March calendar and our bottom thick border that's gonna be seven inches long. Here, the thick border on the bottom, and then take your two stamps and add your adhesive in a U shape. This is just gonna go just about halfway on that thick border in the center. And then we're gonna tuck in our March calendar into our pocket and our new beginnings. Step five, we're gonna cut our April calendar just like we did our January. So it's gonna be seven inches by four and three quarters. And then from our floral second sheet, we're gonna cut out a second piece. That's gonna be seven inches by one and a quarter. And then we're gonna grab these two pieces from our ephemera assortment. And here, April on the bottom and our little border on the top. And then I've added adhesive in an L shape on the bottom of my butterfly. That way this will create a fun little tuck spot. And then making sure you didn't go overboard with your adhesive, I'm just gonna take my bone folder and make sure I can still slip in my little bloom ephemera piece. So that will come in and out as you want, and you can add all your special dates on your calendar. Step seven, we're flipping over our April. This is our third piece of chipboard, and we are gonna start working on May. So we have cut this floral piece to be seven inches by five inches. We've added our border to the bottom, and now we've added some adhesive in a U shape, leaving the left hand open in our May calendar. Our humility is just going to slide right in there. You wanna make sure that that adhesive isn't going to adhere down on it right now, but you do also wanna make sure that it's going to fit. So I'm just gonna slide it in there, making sure it fits, and then pull it out while that dries. And then I'm just going to add some adhesive to the back of this gorgeous little chipboard, and this is gonna go right in the bottom right hand corner. Of course, if you do want to add a little pop of texture, you can always uh, thread in some ribbon or twine through that little tag hole. I'm gonna leave mine nice and simple 
so yours can look just like mine if you're just using your supplies from your kit. Put that to the side and grab your fourth piece of chipboard. Step seven, we have cut our uh, June paper. This is the floral paper that we're gonna be using and we've cut it to seven inches by five inches. Adhere the floral to the top and the scallop border to the bottom. Add your adhesive in a U shape on your double stamp combo and adhere this down. And then tuck these little cuties right in. Step eight, we're gonna flip over our June and work on the back of our fourth chipboard piece. And we're gonna cut our July just like we have with our uh, January. So this is gonna be seven inches by four and three quarters from your July florals that we'll be cutting. This is gonna be seven inches by one and a quarter. This is a cute little ephemera assortment piece and a chipboard. Adhere your calendar on the bottom and your floral on the top. This little floral cutie is gonna go right off to the side of our calendar. I don't want to obstruct our calendar too much since we might wanna do some writing or some marking of important dates. So just adhere down and then I will have some excess coming off that I can trim off. So I'll just flip this over and trim off our excess. And then adhere your chipboard down. If you want that extra bit of flair, you can add twine like Carla has done. Put this to the side and grab your fifth piece of chipboard. Step nine with our floral August paper, we're gonna cut this piece to be seven inches by five and three eighths. And this little cute cutie comes from our ephemera pack. Adhere your floral on the top and your scallop border on the bottom. We're gonna add our adhesive on this calendar in a U shape, leaving the right hand side free. Adhere your poppy down and slide your tag in behind your calendar. Step 10, we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna start working on our September. So with our uh, floral from our September, we are gonna cut this to be seven inches by five inches. Adhere floral to the top and border to the bottom. Add your stamps in a U shape to create that pocket. I may have gone a little overboard with my adhesive this go around, so I'm just using my bone folder to open up some space, make sure that fits, and now kind of reapply, pulling that out, making sure I'm not adhering that down. And our September calendar will slide right in there with our wisdom. Put this to the side and grab our sixth chipboard. Step 11, we are gonna cut our October paper. This is uh, from the bottom left-hand corner of our cut apart. So it's going to be seven inches by four and three quarters. And then from our uh, floral October paper, we're gonna cut this piece to be seven inches by one and a quarter. Adhere the calendar on the bottom and your floral on the top. Add adhesive in a U shape on the back of Harmony with the opening at the top. And here in the bottom left corner, your joyful will just slide right in there when that dries. Step 12, we're gonna flip over our chipboard and start working on November. From November, from our floral paper, we've cut this to be seven inches by five inches. This little chipboard from our chipboard set. Add here floral on top and border on bottom. Add your calendar and the good luck chipboard, leaving a pocket for your flower market tag on the left. And of course, if you wanna add that twine to make it extra special, you can add twine to your tag as well as your chipboard. Step 13, we are taking all of the odd months and cutting them to seven inches by six and three quarters. So that's January, March, May, July, September, and November to seven inches and six and three quarters. And then we're gonna score all of these from the bottom on the six and three quarters inch side at three quarters of an inch. So just noting which side is top and bottom, which can kind of be hard and it's not super important because everything's gonna look good no matter what. And just score all of those at three quarters of an inch. And then we're just going to fold under 
neath on all those score lines. Step 14, we're going to cut all the even months to be 7 inches by 6 inches. So February, April, June, August, October, and December. So I've taken my January paper and I've added adhesive to my three quarters of an inch tab that's been scored over and the top about a quarter of an inch as well. And I'm going to take my February paper and I'm going to adhere this right on top, just matching that up. So it should be nice and even with my top being directly adhered to my January and the bottom being adhered to our three quarters of an inch flap. So we're creating our nice little pocket pages. And then just do the same with all of those. So I've got January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Next, we're gonna take a one inch circle punch or you could use anything that's approximately this size. And we're gonna just punch a notch on one of our sides. So I'm gonna go up starting with my January and I'm going to do about a half of a circle punch about in the center, like so on the right hand side. And then I'm gonna flip this over and I'll do the same on my February. So on the right hand side again, I am going to punch a half of a one inch circle. So I have notches on uh, the January side and then also the February side. That way, when I put in my photo mats and uh, tuck spot things, they'll pull out from right here. And if I give this away to anyone or anyone's flipping through it, they'll be able to see um, that there is something tucked away in there. So then you'll just do the same with all of your photo mat folders. Step 17, we are going to create our monthly uh, photo mat pullouts for those uh, folders we just created. So with January, this is my cut apart page I've been working from, and we're going to cut out this carnation cut apart. It's a total of five and a half inches wide, but we are going to trim both of our sides so we have this nice, even uh, looking piece. So it'll be a total of four and three quarters. So we're gonna take off uh, 3 eighths of an inch on each side to get it to those dimensions. And then we will do the same with all 12 months. And then before you're done with those cut apart pages, we're also going to take, I'm just using my one inch hole punch, or circle punch, and punching out uh, the January one month and February will be two. And you can do it with a one inch punch, which doesn't get you quite the whole circle. Or if you have a one and a quarter inch punch, that would be perfect. Of course, you could always, uh, if you don't have a one inch punch, just cut it out in a square or fussy cut it with your scissors. And then adhere these halfway on the top on the floral side of all of our little floral seed papers. And then we're gonna insert these into the coordinating months. So I've got, um, September on one side and October on the other side, just peeking that little number out of those sides. And then I'll put November on my matchy matchy side with my 11 peeking out and December 12 on this side. So we are gonna start decorating our pocket pages. I have cut out this fascination label from our cut apart page and I have this chipboard piece. I've adhered that fascination label down and then in an L shape, I'm going to just put this right over the top. You'd be able to slide your photos in underneath and have a nice little tuck spot. Step 19, we're gonna flip that over and work on our February pocket side. And we're gonna do a very similar look here with our label. And then we're gonna take these uh, die cut ephemera 
for the March Pocket page, we've got this tag here and a chipboard, and Carla's added some nice little twine there. If you want to keep things a little more simple and interactive, I've just adhered my chipboard piece down on the bottom, and now I can tuck in my tag and have all the space for a photo. For April, we're going to take our tag and this fun little stamp, and Carla has left this open so you can tuck something in that way. I've done it a little bit different where I've just adhered my stamp down and you can pull your tag out and still tuck in a photo and your tag. For the month of May, we have our devotion label here and it's just been adhered on the sides as a belly band where you can tuck in these two stamps. For June, we are gonna take our tag and this cute rose a die cut and add adhesive in a U shape on the bottom of our rows and then we'll be able to tuck our tag underneath. For July we've taken these two cut aparts and some scrap chipboard and we've cut this to be uh, four and a quarter by one inch. We're just going to reinforce this piece so it has a nice little uh, lift to it. I've adhered this down flat and I've adhered sweetness down with just a uh, line of adhesive at the bottom so I can tuck something in. From our August cut aparts we have these two pieces. This is a seven inch thin border and then we're going to take this from your die cuts, this cute little buckle and thread our border through there. And then we'll adhere this like a belly band. So just add adhesive on either side. And this will just slide right underneath there. For September, we have our tag and this cute little die cut. I've added adhesive in an L shape on the back of that. And it just disappears seamlessly into this paper and then our tag slides right in. October. From the November cut apart page, we're gonna cut out this stamp and then we're gonna cut out this border, including that little butterfly. I have adhered the six inch border down and the stamp in an L shape and now we can slide in our cute little frame. December. Step 30, we're gonna take our January chipboard page and flip it over. This is gonna be the cover of our album. And we've cut out our April page to be five inches by six inches. Adhere that to the right side of your January chipboard piece. And then we're gonna cut out two of our thicker pink borders to be six inches. Adhere those two pieces down, starting with your left-hand side piece and then go flush next to that. Step 31, we're gonna cut out this May tag and I'm just going to adhere it to a scrap piece of chipboard that we've got left over and then trim it out. So now we have our own little DIY chipboard tag. Adhere this down, just slightly overlapping our first pink border and then we're gonna take this joyful chipboard and I've added a little bit of a scrap on the flat edge and add some adhesive on both ends and we're going to start to layer our scene. Adhere your clock down and then another one of those die cut sorbents, we're going to adhere these beautiful daisies. From our September page, we have reinforced this symbol of love cut apart with some chipboard. And then on the backside of the floral area, I've added another bit of chipboard and added adhesive strategically. So when I put this down, it's going to fit beautifully and dimensional. I'm just gonna take this die cut butterfly and add adhesive to the center of the body here on my scene. And that way the wings can get a bit of lift. Step 33, I've got two pieces of chipboard that are seven and a half by seven inches and another piece that is a seven and a half by four and five eighths. From our January paper, we're gonna cut out two pieces that are two inches by nine and a half. And from the July paper, we have two that are two inches by seven inches. 
So I'm gonna take my January strips and I have a nice little 1 8 of an inch spacer between my uh, one of my large chipboard pieces and my smaller chipboard piece. And I'm going to start to put this together. So just finding that nice halfway space. Once I have it how I like it, I can pull out my spacer and then flip this over. And then we'll go ahead and bring these sides over as well. So now we have those two pieces fused together. Keeping my smaller piece in the center, I'm going to do the same with my other large piece of chipboard. Just working one side up at a time, at a nice 45 degree angle, and then we can fold that over using our bone folder. Now we're gonna take our two shorter pieces and just meet those in the center. Once those are adhered and burnished, then we're gonna go ahead and take the side of our bone folder and just crease in those center channels and slowly start to fold. This will help it so our papers don't tear and we don't get any big air pockets bubbling up. Step 34, we have a piece of March that's been cut to four and a half by five and a piece of November that's been cut to four and a half by two and a half. And then we're going to adhere these to the center panel here. I've got some nice patchwork florals going on. For step 35, we are going to start working on the front of our calendar base, and that's going to be our December month. You remember we didn't do that one yet, so we're cutting our piece of December to be seven and a half by six inches, and it's going to go on the top front of our calendar base. So what we were just working on is the inside, and this is the front. So I've adhered that, and now I've taken my December thick border that's seven and a half inches, and this is going to adhere towards the bottom of this. So I want to note where I'm gonna have my fold, and I don't want that to go over my fold. So I had adhered my December tag down, my calendar in an L shape so I can tuck things in behind there, and this nice December die cut. Step 36, we've cut our October floral to be seven and a half by five inches, and then we've taken two of those purple borders. We have a thick one that's seven and a half, and then one of the thin top ones that's seven and a half as well. So when you're adhering these, you wanna make sure everything is going the right side up. So this is how our calendar base is going to be, our A-frame. So we've got uh, the front is our December and this will be the back. So the top is this edge here. So I want to adhere my floral to the top. Next, we're gonna take our thick border and this is just gonna go right flush underneath our purple floral. Our thin purple border is just gonna go right underneath there. So now our calendar base is looking really festive and fun. Step 37, we're cutting a piece of our chipboard to be seven and a half by three inches. And then we're going to uh, lightly score this with an X-Acto knife at one and a half inches. So right down the center of our three inch piece. And you just want to do this with your X-Acto until you have a nice point where you can fold it, but you don't want to tear. Now we're going to start creating our holes so we can put our binding rings through our album reinforcer, our album base, and then our pages. So for our album base and our album reinforcer, those are different dimensions than our pages. So those go to uh, seven and a half inches. So on those two, we want to mark at one and three quarters and five and three quarters, and then a half of an inch down. And that is where we are going to 
use our crocodile to punch our largest holes. So with this guide that I've created, I can now create my holes on my album base. So with my album base, I'm just going to use this as my guide and just use the top of this and then go ahead and use your pen to mark your holes and then punch those holes in both the front and back of your album. Add some adhesive to your hole enforcement piece and match one side up with your holes. And then we'll do the same with the other side. Once you have the placement you like, you can go ahead and set that on your table and use your bone folder to make sure you're getting a nice good bond. And I've just clipped that together while it dries. So for my pages that we're going to pop our holes in for our calendar and our pocket pages, I've created another little template that is seven inches instead sort of seven and a half. And uh, this time around, we are going to mark at one and a half and five and a half inches. And a half of an inch down, we'll be uh, punching our holes. So starting with our calendar pages, it's easy. We're just going to take each one of those and you can want to use it with making sure my half of an inch is at the top. You can use your pen to mark your spots, but I find it even easier just to use this as a guide, holding it flush at the top and then punching your holes as you go. So we have started our calendar pages and we'll do the same with all of those. And then we're going to do the same with our pocket pages. Step 40, we're going to cut a piece of chipboard to be seven and a half by six and three eighths. And then we're going to do some exacto knife scoring like we did with our hole reinforcer and we are going to do that at one and a quarter on the six and three eighths side and then at uh, five and one eighth. And just do that enough times until you can successfully bend this back without cutting through. We're going to cut a piece of May that's five inches by three and seven eighths and then a border piece of the thin green that's going to be three and seven eighths inch long and a piece of our July that's one and three quarters by three and seven eighths and go ahead and adhere those onto our larger flat center of our piece that we've created. This is going to go inside of our A frame. Just slide that in and fold the legs out. So now we do have a nice A and a little storage compartment for our tag album we're about to create. So let's put our album together. So we've got our frame all beautifully done and we're going to just take two of these two inch bronze binding rings that came in your kit. Uh, these do also come with our large, our, our tag sets, our large square and a rectangle. So you may have some of these left over in your goodies if you buy our tags through our A-frame base like this and then start to layer on our pages. So first I've got my December, November pocket page. So with my November side up, I'll put that next just right on top of our December calendar. Next, I will put my November calendar. So I want my November calendar and my November pocket page to be facing each other. So I'll have the October side out. 
and then I'll just keep up with this pattern so October sides together and September sides together so now we are done with our calendar mini album and it is full of fun but we do still have quite a few leftovers left of the papers and the embellishments. So let's go ahead and create a quick and easy tag mini album with those. Step 41, we are going to cut all the floral sides of each of our papers to be three and three quarters by seven inches. And on the cut apart side of my January, I've added a U shape of adhesive, leaving the right side free. And I'm just going to now adhere this onto my February side, so floral sides out. And I do have an opening on the right, creating a nice little pocket. I'm going to do the same with each of those, pairing them up with the next month. So March will be with April. And now I have six bases for tags. And now I'm just gonna trim my corners. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and about at a 45 degree angle, I'm gonna go in about an inch and a quarter. So I have the front of my tag and now I'm gonna flip that over to the reverse. So it's the February side up, but I'm still on my January page. And I'm just going to put that in my opposite corner and trim that. So now I have a nice and even corner edges. I'm just going to use one of these as a guide all the way through. So all of my tags are matching. Now we have six gorgeous floral tag bases and we can go ahead and just crop it out some holes in the top there. So we'll just do three at a time using my largest hole. I'm going to go in the center and about a half an inch down and then just using one of those as my guide for the rest. Now we have all of our tags created and we can just take one of those binding rings that came in your kit and voila. Now, if you want to doll up yours with some leftovers, let me show you what Carla has done with hers. And then once you're done with your little tag album, that's going to tuck right away in our little secret compartment at the base of our calendar mini album. So there you have it. We have created the cutest calendar, a great way to celebrate 2023, celebrate all those important dates and reuse this home decor masterpiece year after year. So be sure to share your projects with us on Instagram using that graphic 45 hashtag. And if you're looking for more fabulous tutorials like this one, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so you know every time we upload a new video. Thanks for joining us and as always, happy paper crafting.